Well, Pet, thank you very much for joining us again. Absolute pleasure to speak to you. Um, it's been a strange time for everybody in football, uh, players, managers, commentators with the empty stadiums. What has the experience been like for you? Well, it's a little weird to play without people. So theatre, uh, shows, restaurants and the football sport is to do it for the people. So the cooker doesn't cook for himself, cook for the people. So when you play without people, so it's a little weird, but yeah, just have to do it. And just concern, still concern about the virus is a little bit, maybe be weaker, but it's still there. Mm. And just uh, be careful. That is the only concern I have in this period. The, the last time we spoke, Pep, was about 18 months ago, around Christmas time, uh, a couple of years ago. Um, I asked you what you would change in football if you had the opportunity and you said that you'd like to introduce NBA style timeouts. You must be loving the water breaks. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes when you have the rhythm, good rhythm in the game, you know, oh, why the timeout right now? You know that I want to continue playing in some period when you play. Just said, okay, good. The timeout is good. Yeah, but it's in, in that terms is is not bad. But football is a completely different game for the other one. So I think they did it for the lack of preparation. So we were locked down two months, two weeks, three weeks, no more than, than, than three weeks preparation and play games every three days. So this is uh, too risky for our players. And that's why they did, you know, a little bit the break to, to water and to do it. But I think when everything is going to be settled and the normal situations, the NBA football will be gone. <laughs> Sadly, so you can't get your message across to your players uh, in the same way. Um, look at this season, you're still chasing a treble. I mean, Liverpool obviously have, have a lot of headlines because of their, them winning the title. Um, it, City will finish second, it looks like, possibly three trophies. How would you grade your team's performance this season? Uh, you, you know, you have experience, I think, so in the world of sports. So the problem with sport is when you... Think about the future, forgetting what is in the present. So always we live in the past, in the future, and never in the present. Thinking what would happen if we win two titles would be good or bad. That is ridiculous to think about it. So tomorrow we have a game. We have to try to play mm. to improve what we have done last games. Continue doing what we have done the last game. Really, really many good things. This is the only way to to achieve the big targets. So because for itself, for ourselves. The desire to win the title is always is there. Every player wants to win, and they play to win, and they know if I have semi-final is here, Madrid game, second leg is here. You don't have to tell them, they know it. But what we have to do in the right moment, in the present, to win these games? This is on the, what we have to do. And after the end of the season, we'll be judged. We will judge ourselves in terms of performance and results. Mm. When it comes to th this odd situation that we're all dealing with at the moment, has the Premier League and, and the way that it's come back before the Champions League, is that working in your favour so you can get your players fit, you can get your players back up to their best possible performances before you perhaps head to Portugal and fight for the Champions League? Yeah, I would say maybe yes or maybe not. So I don't know this kind of thing. I think I adapt. I, I think the best way is, is what it is. You know, the situation is we have to play here in Porto. We have to play with these conditions, with the lack of preparation. Is what it is. So don't don't waste time in your mind, in your body, to thinking, oh, you would have if 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 would have been here, we have been there. It's ridiculous. The greatest athletes I learned of them, looking at history and trajectory and what they have done is. The bad complaint is the worst uh, scenario we can we can face as a as a sport mm. guy. So uh, it what is, and now we have here in the Premier League. Oh, you can say okay, without Premier League is already done. We can win the Premier League now. We don't compete. It's lack of attention. It's lack of concentration. And after when we arrive in important games, we are out of the game. Mm. So try to do the best game as possible the next one. And when arrive Arsenal, Real Madrid, we will see what happens. Okay. Um, in terms of off the field planning, uh, Liverpool, you set the standard. You, you put together two of, or if not the two best seasons in the history 
of English football. Liverpool have responded. For, for the neutrals, it is wonderful to watch these two great teams, and there will be other teams next season challenging you as well. Where do you feel that you will prioritise in terms of strengthening to respond to Liverpool next season? We have to improve in our consistency. Our game in general was really good. I'm um, quite similar level of the previous seasons, but our consistency and it doesn't matter which game we played in the Premier League away or home. Always we found the way to win these games. And this season the game was there. The example is last game, like we could sit few, we create incredible chances and we lost. And it happened many times. And when it happened many times, so we have to reflect what is the reason why. Because like uh, like uh, everybody knows, when there is two or three proofs, it's already a reality. And it happened many times. With nine games lose before in the 18s or early 90s or early 20s, maybe you can win the Premier League with 80, 85, 87, close 90. Today, mm -hmm. to win the Premier League, you have to be above 90 points. So, mm -hmm. and losing nine games is impossible. What happened with your consistency, Pep? Because that the last two seasons, 100 points, 98 points, no team has ever been so consistent. So why the lack of consistency, do you think? Because, uh, because the, the, you, uh, you have never seen in all the sports, well, except you have Michael Jordan, but mm -hmm. it's not the case. So y y you are not eternal to win all the games and all the seasons. So the human being change, and I change. The teams want to beat you. You have... You won four titles last season, two Premier Leagues in a row, and you want it, you want it, but maybe you want it in a little bit different way. And in this situation, the opposite won more, and and they beat you. So it's normal. So no team in the NBA win every single, you know, uh, season, and uh, and uh, in tennis all the time. Federer, no, sometimes Nadal, sometimes Djokovic. So football is 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 not. Ex is, is the same so sometimes you cannot win all the time and sometimes if we learn what will happen this season mm. for our future not just in one year in maybe four or five will be good maybe we need it i take it that maybe we need it to leave the situation to realize what we have done was extraordinary and to continue to do it we have to come back do you sense you say you needed it. That was going to be my next question, actually, because, you know, in sport, sometimes you have to respond to negativity, to, to bad experiences. Do you sense that your players are angry with themselves, disappointed with themselves, and, and able to fire themselves up for next season? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they don't like it. They don't like to, to do the situation. That doesn't mean we are going to win um, next season, but the opponents will be there, but I think they don't like if, if if you would like to to leave this situation, we were not able to do what we had done the previous season. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. eight, the ten competitions we played, we faced the last ten. We won eight. So a team he doesn't feel this, or it's not hungry, or upset, or grumpy because mm -hmm. uh, they don't win. It will not be possible. Um, you have so many players that we could go through who are just a joy to watch. Um, one of them is is Kevin De Bruyne. Can you just describe his strengths and how how impressed you are with him? Um, what he can improve because he just is a magnificent passer of a football. He can improve, definitely. He can improve, but he's an exceptional player. Yeah, he can do everything. He's a fighter and has an incredible vision, especially forward. He's a guy who. We have uh, people in front of him to pass the ball, has the ability to do it, is a good taker in all the sense, and is a really nice guy. Um, just finally, Pep, and we, again, we thank you for your time. Um, David Silva, could you pay tribute to him for Manchester City fans across the United States? What a joy he has been to watch over the last decade. He's a legend of this club. What they have done is he's the best role alongside maybe Iniesta. Is the player who moves better in the smallest spaces in the pockets like uh, anyone else in the world. He knows exactly, he can move in the, in the, I don't know, in the smallest room in the world, he can move there and he finds a space to receive the ball and make a decision. And this is the most difficult part of the game and he found, he find the space. In this, in this detail is the best player 
I think with Andres Iniesta, the best player I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Um, Pep, thank you for your time. Good luck with all the challenges you. you have between now and the end of the season. It's interesting to listen to you as ever. It's also interesting to read your T-shirt. Thank, thank you. you very much indeed, Pep. Take care. Thank you. See you. Bye. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7am Eastern on NBCSN. And for more than 1,400 hours of exclusive Premier League content, make sure to visit nbcsports.com gold.